when you think about traffic, you, know, you look out at all those people there that are bothering you, they're looking at you and you're bothering them, right? We are the traffic. This is why we have to have a, a, a solution that's built on community and all of us recognizing our responsibility. That goes beyond individuals to employers and to cities as well, that when we all understand the problem that we want to, we want to tackle, humans can do anything, right? We just have to have the right motivations and we have to be honest with ourselves about the problem. A lot of people kind of believe someone's going to come and save us. The government's going to save us, technology's going to save us, you know, something will happen. We have to save ourselves. And this is really it, the change that we have to make in mindset. Once we change the mindset, everything else can be done. But it all starts with the mindset. I think the first step is really to look at driving by yourself as something evil. Like literally evil. If you begin thinking that way, you begin thinking, how can I take more people in the car with me? Do I need to drive my car today? What are my other options, right? If we take for a minute a look at our daily habits and we look at them critically about what we're doing, that can have a huge impact in what we're doing. This is what Waze Carpool is trying to do is to help people find other people to take with them, help them find a ride so they can leave their car at home and really take the friction out of this process. But at the core, you know, we have to do this ourselves and there are multiple options today. Right now, you know, autonomous cars have a lot of challenges and they're, they've got a lot of work to do. We have a lot of challenges, we have a lot of work to do. So we're focused really on the shared mobility. That's the area that we want, that's the change that we want to bring to the table. So that when the autonomous cars come, we'll be getting into them a few people and not one person. I think government should make very significant investments in the future. The reality is they're not going to do that. For multiple reasons, we all know our governments are not able to plan long term. Right. So at least they should do is work on the short term. And the short term, this is the trend that's actually started globally. It's to increase the cost of driving by yourself. Think about Sao Paulo, right? There's a day a week you're not allowed to drive on the highways based on your license plate. That's an attempt to limit the number of cars. Congestion pricing in London, for example, limits the number of cars. HOV lanes or carpool lanes, right? Limit the number of cars. All these things help push people to make the right decisions. So I think that's a trend that started and cities and municipalities need to accelerate that. It's hard politically because obviously people don't want to change and you know politicians need to get elected. So I'm not saying it's easy, but this is the first step that can happen assuming we're not going to invest trillions of dollars in infrastructure. The second is really to support investments in autonomous cars, in carpooling, in all kinds of alternative options. Scooters, shared bicycles, all these things, bike lanes in cities, all these things are areas where, where governments and municipalities have a very important role to play and they can do it today. Our policy has always been, we want to show you all the options, but we want you to decide who you're comfortable to ride with. You know, when you take a ride sharing service, you don't know who the driver is going to be. Someone's going to show up. With Waze Carpool, it's very different. It's people that live next to you and work next to you. They're not professional drivers. You know who they are. You decide if you want to ride with them or not. You see all their information, how many rides they took, you know, where they work, the, you know, pictures of them, etc. And you can decide that. We also have safety features like you can decide to only ride with your own gender. A lot of women say, I only want to ride with, my, with women. That's fine. Some people say, I only want to ride with someone from my, from my company, right? Which is also fine. We, we validate your company through your email. So we give tools to the user to make the decision, but we're not going to decide for the user what safety is. That depends for each user in terms of their own personal preferences. First stage of the internet was about software. So whenever you have an opportunity that's all software based, it's much easier to do than obviously the hardware or, or the real world. And so it's already either been done or very easy to do. Technology has reached a point that it's very it's accessible to everyone. The next stage is when the internet begins hitting the real world. So if you think about food delivery, okay? food delivery is the internet on the one hand, but the other hand it's the real world. There's someone's making the food, it's getting the cart showing up in your house. This is the next stage of applications that we're just starting today, which have tremendous potential. They are much more complicated, it's messy, it takes a long time, it's hard. That's why there's value there. Think about health. Everything to do with health is just beginning to get touched by the internet and by machine learning and AI, etc. All these things are tremendous opportunities for entrepreneurs. So if I was gonna recommend something to an entrepreneur, especially in Brazil, I would say look at things that are 
hard for an international company to do. Look at things that are local. You know the problems locally that, I, that you have here and look for problems in the real world where the internet can bring a lot of value very quickly. I met some, some of the CEOs of the largest uh, technology companies in Brazil and that was the same problem that everybody spoke about. The biggest problem is there's no engineering culture. Like people don't, computer science is like the 10th mo most uh, uh, requested uh, uh, track in universities, instead of being the first, right? And I think this is a really educational thing. Today, you can get access to MIT level classes online. The information is there. You can get access to the same machine learning that my engineers use. You can get off Google Cloud by yourself, you know, as an engineer. But you have to learn the math, the computer science, you have to have the passion for engineering. And this is, uh, I think, the biggest change that has to happen in Brazil. You know, young people in Brazil still want to be Instagram influencers. They want to be models. They don't think about being computer scientists. And the second challenge is a lot of the great engineers in Brazil leave and go to, other, and go to America or go to other places. In Silicon Valley, I met a tremendous number of amazing Brazilian engineers, but they're not here. <laughs> And this is the other challenge. We need them to come back and bring their what they've learned here. And we need to educate young people that, you know, in the world we're in today, whether you're looking for looking for money or you're looking for impact or you're looking to build things, computer science is the most important thing you can do. <laughs> I may have a friend who's done this. I don't, but a friend of mine might.